the Superbike Unlimited, and we're going to be making a different video this weekend and showing you guys kind of what we do at Westview Racing when we're away from the shop, which is one of the reasons why we haven't been making so much video content this uh, year. So right now we're in Austin, Circuit of the Americas. It's uh, setup day, Thursday, so we're basically just setting up the motorcycle, setting up all the tools. This is my workstation here. Martin's here filming, so we'll be to be a little more involved and um, show you everything. And this is kind of where I'm gonna be working. My primary role is data analysis and ECU calibration. So essentially, what I do is when Matthew comes in, I download everything off the motorcycle. I look for any issues first and foremost, and then we discuss the strategy. And then before the weekend, what we'll do is I'll look at the previous year's data, I'll look at the previous year's ECU calibrations, and I'll build piece by piece the new calibration for the ECU for power, torque output, engine braking, wheelie control, um, essentially every traction control, every major strategy on the motorcycle. I'll try to predict what we're gonna be needing this weekend. And then right away, we're gonna be working on that from session to session. So what we're gonna to try to do is show you some of that process. Martin's gonna be here, gonna film stuff on the track um, and try to just bring you guys in and kind of see what it's like to be involved with a professional top level superbike team. All right, so it's Friday morning. Uh, we're getting ready to do free practice one. It's gonna be at 10 a.m. local time. The big thing today is just going to be testing our new settings. Again, this is all of our settings are going to be loosely based on last year, but a lot of that stuff's not going to translate because for the 2023 season, we've got a major firmware update with our Morelli ECU. And with that update came a whole bunch of new strategies and a lot of things that didn't really transition from last year's firmware to this year. So it's really been challenging for me from track to track because I've kind of had to build everything back up. Uh, it's been a good opportunity because it's forced me to learn a lot of the ins and outs of this firmware. Uh, so today that's the big thing with the first session is trying to work as efficiently as possible take the feedback we're getting and apply changes quickly um, and the other big thing for this weekend is effing hot um, we're going to be trying to manage heat not just on the motorcycle but on ourselves because it's going to be like almost 110 degrees today um, and there's not a lot of wind so it's going to be super hot but let's do a quick uh, walk around on the bike now that we've got the new bodywork on um, this is our new YME so this new bodywork has an aero package that we haven't had previously. We're about to roll the bike down, so we're going to get out of the way. But uh, you can see this has a new aero package. It should really help us uh, in terms of really and top speed. So we're going to be testing that this weekend.
110 C on temp tracks, or uh, temp on track, so we're just gonna try to figure out what's causing that. example of a bad session unfortunately we had uh, some major temperature issues um, we're gonna have to go over the motorcycle check a few things it seems like there may be an issue with one of our coolers so the guys are we're just gonna have to call this session we didn't get a completed time um, for sure not the way we want to start this weekend out but uh, these things happen as part of racing so the uh, the next step is gonna be the guys are gonna pull the, the bike in here we're gonna start going through some things mechanically and identifying the issue uh, correct it, get ready for qualifying uh, practice one. Okay, so quick update. We've uh, gone through the motorcycle. The, it looks like we just had a small air pocket trapped in one of the coolers. So we've uh, done a thorough bleed, uh, refilled the system, charged everything up, got the bike up to operating temperature. Seems like it's gonna be okay. And just because our ambient temps today are gonna be so high, I've done some stuff on the back end with the ECU to try to potentially get ahead of any issues that we may see later. Um, that's gonna be something that we don't necessarily implement unless we have to. And I can't get too specific with what that is, but um, it shouldn't really have an impact on our performance, but uh, it should better help control on-track temperatures should we see some of those rises again. Um, we, won't wanna, we don't wanna have the motorcycle over about 100C, which even that's outside of what we consider optimal, but we're just thinking worst case scenario, we wanna keep this thing below 100C here today at all times. Uh, optimally, we'd like to be in the mid 80s or low 80s. So this gives you kind of an idea, it's really hot. So we have to kind of do the best we can. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Next up, we have qualifying one. Obviously, we're gonna to have to really make the most of that session because we lost our free practice, which is really a valuable session for us to collect data and prepare for qualifying. So it's no problem. We're just gonna really be kind of on point make the most of that session, so that's gonna be coming up next. Okay, so this is gonna be QP1. This is Robbie. As we embark onto the unknown, we shall see things that no man has seen before. Pull. We will see pull. She's gonna be swole, pull. <laughs> We've seen pull before. Not today. It's been a while. But yeah, so we're gonna be, uh, it's gonna be hammered down because the main thing is just gonna be getting the most out of this session. We missed so much time earlier and valuable data that, that for all of us, it's just gonna be crunch time and trying to get the most out of this and hoping that our bike temperature is under control. So we got something that we're gonna start off with to try to get that under control. If everything seems fine, then we're gonna we're gonna change maps, maybe give the bike a little more pep and uh, and see how it goes.
Okay, so that was the end of QP1. We have pretty much got the temperature under control. Bike has pretty much finished out the session in uh, the high 90s, which uh, just comparatively, I'm told that a certain red motorcycle that has a single digit number here is running on track over 110 C. So that, that's, we're doing okay. Of course, that thing's kind of got a hot rod motor in it, which ours is a little more conservative in comparison, but um, anyway, we're comfortable with temperatures. Um, we knew it was gonna be a challenge because um, I had to build all of our TC strategy and torque and all that stuff. Kind of educated guess um, using previous data and that kind of thing. But again, so much of our previous settings didn't translate to the new ones. So um, definitely gonna be some work there. I, I worked a lot in the session to give Matthew sort of what he wanted, which he was looking for a bit more drive on the initial throttle opening and uh, uh, it feels like that's where we're kind of losing onto some of the other guys and then once the bike is upright it's good so um, that's going to be what I'm working on this evening is once we get the bike back in right now it's in park for me to get post race or excuse me post qualifying tech inspection done uh, I'll do the, the data download look at everything kind of validate his feedback and uh, we'll look at changing some of our TC and torque strategy to help the bike jump off the corner better at the very initial throttle and all these things change very much from track to track and it's based essentially on conditions, the actual track surface, the weather, the tire that we're using, it's all based on grip essentially. So um, these settings, it's it's always a moving target. So this is why you need somebody who does this kind of work because if you want the bike to be optimized for those conditions, the settings are gonna change every single session. So that's gonna be what I'm doing next. And uh, we'll be working on that this evening, get everything going for tomorrow morning for Q2. And uh, we'll see if we can get you some footage of a debrief with the rider, kind of show you what it's like in the middle of the session and uh, we'll go from there.
to bring you guys in on this because things are not going to plan. Uh, we had, obviously we missed our entire practice session, which put us way behind as you guys are aware. So we've all been playing catch up and, and unfortunately it's not just for us when that happens, that's also the rider because the rider has to get up to speed, get comfortable flowing and get comfortable going out and just put work in right away on the racetrack, going, getting up to speed. And we haven't had the opportunity to do that. So long story short, in that session, when uh, Matthew came in to do his Q tire, had a quick debrief. He was super happy with the, uh, the way the bike felt, electronics felt, everything was good. Uh, popped on the Q, went out, and when he came around to do his flyer at the end of sector one, he uh, lost the front and got pulled up underneath the motorcycle. And uh, I believe we lost our brake reservoir. Something was damaged on the bike that we were unable to finish the session. So we're not able to put a qualifying time in. Had to just defer to one of our times on the heat cycle race tires, our qualifying time, which I believe puts us in P9, back of row three. So given that we were on pole here last year, not the result anybody wanted, but it is what it is. That's racing. Sometimes you're gonna have types of weekends and uh, we're just going to make the most out of it. So next up we have race one and uh, we're going to hope that we can get a really good start and get up into the mix and uh, we'll see what happens.
right, so we're about to start the first race. Uh, it's gonna be hot. The big thing for us is gonna be trying to manage the temperature on the motorcycle and trying to get through this little pack right here as quickly as possible. So hopefully we get a good start and we can make the most of this. Get some good data for tomorrow and, and have a good result. So, uh, rough day today. We wound up, um, all things considered, could have been worse. We started the, the race in P9, wound up P5. Um, but the pace just wasn't there, uh, for sure, compared to last year's pace and what we know that Matthew and Mike are capable of. I don't think any of us are happy, Matthew included. Um, but, you know, we're just going to work on some things, um, reset. We were, uh, Gonna make a lot of changes to the, the electronics, just make some stuff to kind of help Matthew ride the bike the way he's wanted to ride, and he's gonna make some adjustments to his riding style tomorrow because I think there's a compromise that needs to be made there to kind of get the most out of the package. Uh, the motorcycle, the chassis electronics are so different from last year. Um, we're having to kind of change things up and look at what some of the other Yamaha guys are doing, like Jake, who obviously dominated the race today. We got to look at that, and consider there's some takeaways there. So. Tomorrow we're just going to try some things a little differently, try some stuff in the warm-up, and uh, we've got a few things to load in and test, and um, we'll see how that goes. I, I think we're expecting a, a pretty solid step forward in performance, so we'll check in with you there. All right, so it's Sunday morning. Uh, we've got two sessions today. First one's going to be warm-up, which is a really short session. It's going to be a 10-10 local time, um, and basically what I'm doing right now is I've just you know gone back to the hotel, got a night's sleep, and. Uh, showed up fresh this morning. Just wanted to go back over some stuff and just kind of look at it with a fresh uh, perspective and a rest of mind. And um, everything looks good. I'm just looking over some engine parameters, trying to see if we can get a little more performance out of the bike. Um, made some good strategy updates yesterday. And uh, as mentioned, we talked with Matthew a bit about um, making some uh, changes to his approach to a few corners to better maximize the way our bike is set up. And uh, I fully feel he's gonna do that this morning and then we'll find some time. Uh, and along with that, we've made several electronics and chassis changes to help him feel more comfortable and more confident on the motorcycle. So I think yesterday was just a little bit of an off day because we lost so much time. So we're just going to have to make the most out of today and, and use this warm-up session as a good opportunity to dial in our race two settings. So this is, if you want to have a look at our screen, this is just kind of uh, one of the many screens I look at. I can't show you too much of this because there is some proprietary information, but this is one of our traction control screens. If you can see up here, I have all these different tabs. Each one of those is essentially focused on a different strategy, um, and I'll use these as a, uh, a way to calculate changes. We have all these tables where I can input sort of um, uh, simulations of potential settings I might try. It takes some time to do that, but you can, with this software Wintax, which is the Morelli uh, data acquisition software, I can... If I want to spend the time to do it, I can. If I want to create a traction controls table or strategy or torque strategy or something like that, I can create tables and load those in there and simulate what they might look like. So you don't always have to do that, but sometimes it's a quick way to compare settings and try to get an idea. Okay, what might work better in this corner or in this certain condition? So that's just sort of what I'm doing this morning and, and trying to find a way we can help him feel better in certain areas, give him a little more traction control support, and uh, get off the corner a bit better in a few spots.
race two. Um, uh, race was red flag because we had uh, a major mechanical. One of the other teams had a major mechanical and split all over the racetrack. Even Gillum looks like he had a major failure. Um, so, gonna make a couple of quick changes before we go back out for the restart. It's gonna be short to 10 laps. Um, just making some small changes to torque and wheelie control in a few sectors. Um, and we'll send it back out. guys so we're back at the shop now obviously you've kind of had uh, a bit of a, of a fly on the wall look at what it's like to to have a relatively disappointing weekend at a superbike uh, uh, race so um, you know kind of to wrap things up after the last clip there I went back and, and had a quick debrief with Matthew and had a good chat with him and it was a bit bittersweet because he was really happy with the final uh, setup that we had on the bike. We made some chassis and electronics changes for that last race that uh, that really allowed him to turn the bike and flow through some of the sections that he was struggling with earlier in the weekend. And um, the uh, data backs that up. The bike looked really good the little amount of track time that we had. Um, again, JD came back by again and um, what he actually clarified had happened was that uh, his rear wheel came off the ground when he went for like an inside pass. So he was unable to brake any further because, you know, the bike would have rotated over. And uh, so we kind of just had to ride the thing out and just and plow it into the side of Matthew. And he was incredibly apologetic. So again, no hard feelings there for many of us, but uh, it's just a bummer, you know, it was a tough weekend and we really wanted to come back with a strong result there. So, um, you know, that's racing. That's, it's one of those things where, um, the highs, we had a talk with Matthew about, Matthew about this at the end of the event, and the highs are really high and the lows are really low. That's just the way it is. So I'd like to do this again, and hopefully, um, you know, even I, I noticed that the audio quality wasn't the great, greatest. Next time we go, I'll try to get like a lapel mic or something so you can hear a little better, but um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. You can kind of see some of the stuff that was going on. I know it's a little hectic and sort of disjointed the way we're editing all this together, but again, it was more or less just meant to kind of uh, have a fly on the wall perspective versus be a you know some high level production because we ain't there yet but uh, anyway I hope you guys enjoyed it um, it was tough but um, we walked away with some really valuable data there's a lot of stuff that some of it's really only going to work at that particular track but I've got some really good information for when we go back there for testing or to race again I've got some stuff that we're going to use that I think is really going to be a step and we're all happy with where we ended up um, in terms of the, the setting of the bike so uh, we've only got one more race this year. That's going to be New Jersey. It's in about a week and a half from today. This is Tuesday. Um, and uh, after that, it's back to winter testing and development for the, the following season. So anyway, thanks again for you guys watching this. I know it's a long one. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Um, if you have any questions or any comments, be sure to leave them below. I'll try to answer them as quickly as I can. And uh, make sure to subscribe to our channel, like the video. Um, it definitely helps. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.